Now, we have been teaching a series called The Blessing, and this is uh, week three of a series called The Blessing, and today's message is called The Blessing and the Cross. The Blessing and the Cross. Say that with me one time. The Blessing and the Cross. Our text verse is found in Galatians chapter 3, beginning in verse 11. And this Galatians chapter 3 is such a pivotal, it is such a cornerstone of our faith. There is so many rich nuggets in this one chapter. We're going to hit on a few of them, but if you don't remember any of the others, this is what I want you to remember. I am blessed with believing Abraham. I am blessed with believing Abraham. Galatians 3 and 9. Write that down. Put it on, write it on the back of your hand. Write it on your neighbor's hand. Write it on something and make sure you got it. All right. Galatians chapter 3, verse 11. It says that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident. For the just shall live by faith. And really this chapter is a, a, is a good study on the difference between the law and faith. And there is a tremendous difference between the law and faith. And we're going to talk about that just, just kind of in detail, just a little, little bit. But uh, verse 11, no one is justified by the law in the sight of God. And that's a very important point. That's evident. The just shall live by faith. In the New Testament, it says that three or four different times. The just shall live by faith. Yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. In other words, if you bring yourself under a legalistic system, you have to live by every jot and tittle of the law. Or you're going to be breaking the law. You can bring yourself in under the law. In fact, Paul is trying to get uh, born-again believers not to go under the, uh, the law of Moses. He was wanting them to, get, to live free in their faith and not have to go back under. Because he was talking to Gentile believers who were never under the law. And he didn't want them to go under the law at that point. Amen. Now, verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree. And we'll talk about the curse of the law in just a moment. But the point there is Christ has redeemed us. We have been redeemed. That, verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. Gentiles means outside the covenant in Christ Jesus that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Say, that's me. me. Say, that's me. me. Yeah, Christ has redeemed us that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us. Now, in previous weeks, we've talked about and defined the blessing. But this is what you need to know about the blessing. Way back in the Garden of Eden when there was Adam and Eve and God created all the things, you know, the six days of creation, then the making of man out of the dirt, making of the woman out of the man, and then God blessed them. Now, understand God's intent here. God took man, God took woman, he put them in paradise. He was wanting them to live in the best environment that you can imagine. And then he spoke a blessing over them, the very the very first thing he said to them, the very first thing he imparted to them was a blessing. And it's found in Genesis 1 and 25. And this is the blessing that God expected man to live under all his days. And then God blessed them and God said to them, be. Now, when God said be, he was imparting something to them. He was not making a suggestion. When God said let there be light, he was not saying it's my suggestion that there be light. No, he was imparting light into the physical universe. When he said let there be and there was and it was good, he was imparting something. So when he says to man, be, man and woman, be, he is imparting something to them. What is he imparting fruitfulness to them he said be fruitful and multiply fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over 
fish of the sea, bird of the air, every living thing that moves on the earth. So he gave them dominion over everything in the sea, everything in the air, everything over the earth. That's a pretty good deal. Come on, say amen. Amen. There are some scholars that believe that if a man had uh, dominion over everything in the air, he must have flew. And if he had dominion over everything in the sea, he must have uh, swim like flipper. And uh, dominion over everything on the land, he must have been king of the jungle, so to speak, you know, the, the head lion. But I don't know. I wasn't there. But it was really cool. Whatever he had, he could do it. Come on, say amen. amen. Everything in the sea, everything in the air, everything on land, he had dominion over. So this is the blessing. This is what God wanted man to live in. God wanted man blessed. And man threw it all away. Man believed the word of the devil over the word of God. Man committed treason against God. God took man out of the garden. Man was in a fallen state. And God immediately, because he loved man and he wanted the very best for man and still wanted man blessed, he immediately came up with the plan of redemption. And in the plan of redemption, there are blessings uttered once again to mankind. Now, we look in the life of Abraham. We see the blessing uttered to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. And last time we defined the blessing of Abraham. There's seven points to it. I'll do it very quickly right here. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. And the Lord said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house. To a land that I will show you. I call this the blessing of position. Into a land of blessing. You know, the land that's flowing with milk and honey. This is the promised land. This is where you're going to excel. This is where you're going to find your purpose. This is where you're going to find your calling. This is where you're going to be celebrated and not just tolerated. So this is the first blessing. It is the blessing of position. The second blessing is found in Uh, verse 2. And I will make you, a single person, a great nation, many people. So I call this the blessing of increase. It goes on to say, I will bless you. That word bless means happy, fortunate, prosperous, and to be envied. I'll say it again. Happy, fortunate, prosperous, to be envied. Enviable. That's how the word blessing is defined. And I didn't come up with that. The, the, the translators of your Amplified Bible came up with that. And so it says, I will bless you. So I call that the blessing of favor and joy. And then he says, I will make your name great. I call that the blessing of honor. Where your name does not die away when your body dies away, but your reputation remains from one generation to the next generation to the next generation. There are people, most likely, in your family that you have never met, grandpa, grandpa, great-grandpa, that have had a positive influence on your life, that you honor their name. My middle name is the name of an ancestor that I have never met, but he's spoken of very highly in my clan in the old country in the highlands somewhere. And but there are people that have a great name, so I call that the blessing of honor. And then you shall be, it says, a blessing. You shall be a blessing. I call this the blessing of overflow. In other words, your life is so blessed that you become a blessing. Blessed to be a blessing. Say that with me one time. Blessed to be a blessing. Praise God. That's the blessing of overflow, that you're living in the overflow, that God is your source. Yes, you're thankful for that check on Friday, but that check on Friday isn't the whole story because God is your source. Blessings come from the windows of heaven that are open above your head. Amen. And then there is, he says, I will bless those who bless you. That's the blessing of partnership. When you give the prophet a cup of water, you get the prophet size reward. That's called the blessing of partnership. Hey, when we send the missionary team out to Palawan, Philippines, there were 3,000 souls saved. You know what? That went to your account because you sent them. 
Come on, say amen. Since then, there's been 3,000 more saved. You know what? That went to your account. And in our jail ministry, there's folks saved every single week. That goes to your account. In our juvenile detention ministry, that goes to your account. In our highways and byways ministry, those souls saved, that goes to your account. You say, well, I didn't go to the Philippines. doesn't make any difference. You did in a way. You sent missionaries. So that goes to your account. Do you all understand that blessing? That's a good blessing, isn't it? And then finally it says, And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And I call this the blessing of influence. And really, ultimately, it is the blessing of salvation by faith and the impartation of the Spirit and the forgiveness of our sins. So everybody say, This is a good deal. Yeah, so when we're talking about the blessings of Abraham, we're talking about spiritual blessings, and we're talking about natural blessings at the same time. God doesn't uh, feel any need to separate one from the other. In fact, if you're blessed spiritually, that will spill over into your natural life as well. Come on, say amen. Because the Word says that He'll open the windows of heaven, and He will pour out the blessing in such that our barns cannot hold it and our vats are overflowing so we have the natural blessing and we have the spiritual blessing now i want you to mark this verse down in your bible it says in genesis chapter 13 verse 2 abram was very rich in livestock in silver and in gold in livestock in silver and in gold he was very rich do you think that offended God I do not because I know it was God who made him very rich in livestock in silver and in gold hey what if your business prospered wouldn't that be great What if you got the raise? Wouldn't that be great? What if you got the promotion? Wouldn't that be great? Come on, church, say amen. Nobody's going to turn down the raise. Nobody's going to turn down the promotion. Nobody's going to turn down the blessing. So let's have an open heart to the blessing of the Lord. Hallelujah. I tell you, Debbie and I, we have a big vision. We have a vision beyond these walls. We want to touch the world for Jesus Christ. We cannot afford to think in terms of lack and limit and loss. We have to think in terms of I am blessed with believing Abraham. I believe that God can help us get this gospel to every corner of this earth. Glory to God. How's he going to do it? I don't know how he's going to do it, but he's going to do it. Hallelujah. All I have to do is believe him for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the blessing was uttered in the garden. And then the blessing was restated to Abraham in in God's covenant with Abraham. Then again to Isaac. Then again to Jacob. Then to the nation. And when God was bringing the nation out of Israel, uh, out of Egypt, he had to transform their thinking. He had to take them from a people of bondage to a free people. He had to give them a new concept of who, what, who, of who God was. But more importantly, or, or in addition to, I should say, he had to reveal to them what was righteous and what was unrighteous. What was holy and what was unholy, what was uh, right and what was wrong. He had to reveal to them what was transgression. Why? Because sin blocks the blessing. When God was making a nation out of the tribes of Israel, he was bringing them out of hundreds of years of bondage in a foreign nation, and he had to make them into a whole new national identity, so he handed them down the law. And in Galatians chapter 3, you see this great dissertation between what is the difference between the law and faith. Why were they given the law? Because the blessing came to Abraham 430 years before the law by faith. Why didn't God just always operate through faith? He did. Nothing ever changed. The law was nothing more than a revelation of what is righteous and what is unrighteous. But here's the thing about the law. 
The law had no power in it to help you live righteously. It simply told you what is good, what is bad. But it didn't impart any spiritual power into you to help you live to what is good. And because people lacked the power, people broke the law, and that was called the curse of the law. That's the curse of the law. But you remember our beginning text here. Jesus, in Galatians 3 and 13, has redeemed us from the curse of the law. We're not under any curse, glory to God. The broken law brings a curse, but Jesus fulfilled the law, and we're in Christ, so he has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Hallelujah. So we're people of faith. We're simply people of faith, glory to God. And that is a huge revelation. That is something you've got to get your head around because as people of faith and not under some system of legalism. And let me tell you what. People will always try to bring you into some system of legalism to try and and make you more saved than you already are. Yeah, you got to get water baptized, or you got to eat this certain food, or ignore that other certain food, or or you got to have your Sabbath on the Saturday rather than on the Sunday. I mean, there's a whole list of stuff. But Jesus simply told Nicodemus, you must be born again. That's it, church. It's all by faith. For by faith are you saved. Glory to God. (laughs) Amen. It's not of works. Come on, say amen. 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 Galatians 3 and 11. No one is justified by the law in the sight of God. The just shall live by faith. Now, it's so important that we as believing Christians get this revelation. And uh, the revelation I'm going to give you right now. And we have to form it up properly in our head. Because we, we've read it so many times, but we've skimmed it. We went over the top of it. We didn't let it absorb down into us. And I'm going to point it out in a way that I want you to let it get down into your spirit. All right? Turn with me to Galatians 3 and 13, our text. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Say amen. amen. The reason he did that is because curse or the sin blocks the blessing. I mean, it got Adam and Eve kicked out of the garden. Sin blocks the blessing. But Christ has redeemed us from that sin, that curse of breaking the righteous commandments of God. Okay? Now look in the next verse. That the blessing. Verse 13. Christ has redeemed us that the blessing, verse 14, of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. Jesus went to the cross to release blessing into your life. You can't talk about the cross without talking about blessing. Jesus went to the cross to release blessing into in your life. What blessing are we talking about? Well, primarily, we're talking about salvation by faith. It goes on to say that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. But that's not the, the entirety. That's the pinnacle. That's the pinnacle. But, but listen, we're talking about the blessings of Abraham. All right? Are you still with me? Okay, if you're with me, say, I'm with you. All right, I'm glad to hear it. Now, look in verse 16. Now to Abraham and his seed, that being Jesus, were the promises, with an S, were the promises, because we've already pointed out, there's seven points to the the blessing of Abraham, were the promises made, okay? So God made promises 
to, in the form of blessing, in covenant, to Abraham. He reiterated them to his child Isaac. He reiterated them to his child Jacob. And it would be manifest in the seed. It's not manifest in the law, though there are blessings in the law. We'll talk about that next week or, or when we get back to this again. There are manifest blessings in the law. But the law is not the end point of the blessing the seed is the end point of the blessing. He said to Abraham and his seed were promises made. And that seed, who is Christ? So, Abraham, you're blessed. Isaac, you're blessed. Jacob, you're blessed. Israel, you're blessed. The Messiah of Israel, Jesus Christ, you're blessed. How does the Gentile get blessed? I move into Jesus Christ. By my faith, and I identify with him, he becomes my Lord. So now, because he's the seed of Abraham, because he's the heir, I become a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Because by faith, I identify with everything that Jesus did. All right. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to tell you some facts that you've got to settle up in your spirit in order for the transforming of your mind or the renewing of your mind to transform your life. Go to Galatians 3 and verse 7. This is why what I'm saying is so important. Now, understand, as a pastor, it is my calling and my desire to get you out of any place, any desert place, any place of lack, any place of harm, hurt, ill will, whatever it might be, and to get you into green pasture, still waters, because that's what a shepherd does for sheep, okay? So I'm telling you that the Bible calls you blessed. I want you to live in the blessing. I want your marriages blessed. I want your finances blessed. I want your health blessed. I want your children blessed. I want your dog blessed. I want your cat blessed. I want everything about your life blessed. Come on, say amen. I want your house of worship blessed. I want the missionaries that you support blessed. I want everything you put your hand to be blessed. All right. So you're with me now. Amen. Okay, now this is why it's so important. Galatians chapter 3, verse 7. Therefore, no. You, this is what you're supposed to know. This is what Paul wants you as a believer to know. That only those who are of faith, say that's me, are sons of Abraham. That's a statement of fact. Those who are of faith are. This is a statement of fact are sons of Abraham. So if you're a born again believer, you are a person of faith, you are son of Abraham. It's the law does not make anybody a son of Abraham. Circumcision does not make anybody a son of Abraham. Faith is what makes people a son of Abraham. Okay? And the scripture foreseen that God would justify the Gentiles by faith. Preach the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying in you, all nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are, we're getting ready to make another statement of fact, those who are of faith, that's me, that's you, are blessed. Those who are of faith are blessed. That's a statement of fact. You, you might not take advantage of that. You might not uh, decide to live in accordance with that. But according to the will of God, this is a statement of fact. Those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Now, how was Abraham blessed? He was blessed with position. He was blessed with uh, increase. He was blessed with favor. He was blessed with joy. He was blessed with honor. He was blessed with overflow. He was blessed in partnership. And he was blessed with influence. Those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. That's you. That's your life. Oh, Jesus, help us. Now, here's the deal. we got to renew our mind to that. Because we can't transform our lives until we renew our mind. Uh, Romans 12 and 2. 
Don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Once you have your mind renewed to the idea that I am blessed with believing Abraham, then you begin to see the transformation of your life follow in accordance with the blessing. I am blessed with believing Abraham. You say, well, there's portions of my life that aren't a blessing. I, I understand there's portions of Abraham's life that wasn't a blessing. But that doesn't determine the entirety of your life. You just look at that thing and say, that doesn't bless me, but I am blessed. You, you, you go through it. You put it under your foot. You put it behind you. You take authority over it. You, you go through it. Hallelujah. You, you renew your mind to the facts. And I just told you the facts. Those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. When you renew your mind, you're really just doing three things. You're declaring, I am what the Bible says I am. I have what the Bible says I have. I can do what the Bible says I can do. That's the whole process of, of the renewed mind right there. You're agreeing with the Word of God. I am who the Bible says I am. I have what the Bible says I have. I can do what the Bible says I can do. And once you get your mind renewed to that, then you see your life transformed. That's why we fight the same battles over and over and over again. That's why we experience defeat over and over and over again. Because we just simply haven't renewed our mind to the fact that I am blessed with believing Abraham. That I am who the Bible says I am. I do have what the Bible says I have. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Is anybody with me this morning? Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, uh, folks will say, will listen to me preach this message on the blessing, and they'll say, listen, brother, you're, you're off the mark, because really what you should be focusing is not on the blessing, but on the blesser, and I would agree with them in that, because the Bible says that the, we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and he'll add all the other things unto us. Yes, we should uh, focus our devotion, our love, our reverence, our fear of the Lord on the Lordship of Jesus Christ, but we have to remember that Jesus is focusing on his bride. He's focusing on us, and he wants us blessed. While we're focusing on him, as we reverence him and we worship him and we obey him, he's focusing on us, wondering how can I get the windows of heaven open above their head to pour out a blessing on their life so they can further the cause of Christ in the world today. Hallelujah. 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 Christ loves his bride. He wants his bride blessed. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. He says, You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. One version says to make wealth, that he may establish his covenant. Why does he want his bride, the church, blessed to establish his covenant? There is the furtherance of the gospel in the world today that we must be cognizant of and we must be blessed to do our very best to get this good news to every corner of this earth. You know, if you're going to be a great commission church, go into all the world and uh, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the age. If you're going to be a great commission church, you need the blessings of the Lord. I'm going to say it again. You need the blessings of the Lord to carry that message around the globe. 
if you're going to be a Great Commission church, if you're going to be a multi-generational church, I mean, if you're going to live beyond yourself to the next generation beyond you and the next generation beyond you and leave something for them in good shape like a church that is paid off and facilities that are excellent and things that are ready for the next generation and, and training programs and Bible schools and gymnasiums and everything that the next generation needs, but not just that generation, the generation after them and the generation after them should the Lord tarry, then you need the blessings of the Lord to make establish and establish his covenant in the earth today. If you're going to be a multi-generational church, I tell you what, if you're going to be a thy kingdom come, thy will be done in the earth church then you've got to have the blessings of the Lord manifest in your life so that you can build up the kingdom of God. You say, well, it's all done by prayer. Well, hey, if you're going to meet anywhere that's not under a tree and pray, but you're going to meet in a building with some air conditioning and actually turn on the lights, then you need the blessings of the Lord. If you need a car to get to that prayer meeting, you're going to need the blessing of the Lord. If you want to put gas in that car to get to the prayer meeting, you're going to need the blessings of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm not afraid of the blessing. I'm just going to tell you, I'm not afraid of the blessing. I'm not afraid of the blessing. I've had people walk out on me when I've taught on the blessing. I've had people, when I've taught on, on uh, the, the uh, Financings and funding in the kingdom of God. I've had people walk out on me. You know what? I'm still preaching because I want you blessed. Hey, you can walk out on the blessings of the Lord if you want to, but I'm not going to. I want the blessings manifest in this ministry. I want the blessings manifest in your life. I want the blessings manifest in our missionaries' lives. I want... I want the blessing. I want the blessing. I want the blessing. Hallelujah. And you know what? You know what? You know what? You know what? Here's the deal. I have the blessing. I'm blessed with believing Abraham. I'm blessed with believing Abraham. I'm blessed with believing Abraham. That doesn't scare me. I said that doesn't scare me. You know why it doesn't scare me? Because I don't love money. I don't serve money. I'm not even attracted to money. I've got a God perspective of money. Money is a tool in the hand of a righteous man to further the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Money doesn't cause me to spin my head around. Money doesn't pull on me. Money doesn't make me a different person. Money doesn't change my heart. Money, money is a tool in the hand of a man of God that wants to see the gospel spread around this globe to see souls come into the kingdom. Hallelujah. 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 We, we got to get past this idea that, you, that poverty is, godly, is next to godliness. Hey, listen, you, you can love God and be in poverty and believe God to bring you out of that thing. I tell you what, when Debbie and I were in Bible school, we didn't have three cents to rub together. Our meal was peanut butter on taco shells. That's what we ate. Listen, but you know what? We, it's a different day now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm not afraid to tell you you should be blessed, that God wants you blessed. It's his design for you to be blessed. He put man in the Garden of Eden and covered him with blessings, and he wants you blessed. He wants you healthy. He wants you happy. He wants you to have life and life abundantly. He wants you to have victory over the devil. He wants your body to be whole and well and strong. He wants to renew your youth as the eagle. That's the will of God in your life. I'm not afraid to tell you that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I, was, uh, I had a visitor come to church one time, way, way, way back when we first opened our doors. Visitor came to church, and uh, he, he, said, he said, Pastor, what time does church start? And we were standing right out there in the lobby. And I looked at my watch, and I said, oh, we're going to start in about 30 minutes. He looked at my watch. This is a very expensive watch. It's a Raymond Wild watch. And uh, this was a gift. Somebody gave it. I didn't buy that. Somebody gave that to me. And you know what? They're, they were in partnership with me, so they're blessed. Glory to God. And so they get, but he looked at my watch, and, he, and I just, I could read his mind. Preachers should not have expensive stuff. And he walked out the door. He did not say one more word to me. He looked at my watch, and he walked out the door. I said, I said in my heart, my God, listen, why do people walk out on the blessings? And why are blessings such an affront when Jesus Christ went to the cross that we can have the blessings of the Lord? The Bible is very clear. Christ has redeemed us that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us. That's the word of God. Hallelujah. How can you preach the cross of Jesus Christ without preaching the blessing that is attached to it? Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. So the message today, as a pastor, I want you to renew your mind to this one simple little phrase, I am blessed with believing Abraham. Because that's where the transformed life begins. Believing Abraham was blessed in his position. He was blessed in his increase. He was blessed in his favor and in his joy. He was blessed in his honor. He was blessed in overflow. He was blessed in his partnership blessings. And he was blessed in his influence. Believing Abraham has touched the world because of that man's faith. You're born again. How can we deny that blessing? Those who be of faith are the sons of Abraham. Happy, fortunate, prosperous, enviable. Happy, fortunate, prosperous, enviable. That's God's design for your life. That's God's design for your life. Did you get anything out of this today? Yeah. Hallelujah.